All right, we're now alive. Sorry about that. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another day of GameSpot's Play for All event. We're combining all the big, huge gaming announcements. Yes, we're very excited about the PS5 reveal tomorrow, but today we're raising some money for charity, and we have some very special guests joining us. So we are going to be playing Apex Legends with some of the cast members of Apex Legends. So joining us today, we've got Mirage, Roger Craig Smith. Hello. How are you? And we have Watson, Justine Huxley. Sure, hi. So in order to play, so Roger, you're gonna be playing with the best gamer tag <laughs> in the world. It is my favorite. Um, I'm not gonna Thank be playing. You. I'm gonna be monitoring chat, monitoring donations, but we have ringers, okay? So we're gonna be hopefully carried to some wins. We're gonna get, we're gonna be champions of the arena. We've got Jordan <laughs> Ramey. Hello. <laughs> and Max Blumenthal. Hey yo. Um, so if you if you've basically seen any Apex content on GameSpot, these two are the ones to thank for making it look so good. Um, but we are here to raise money for two great causes. Links are on the screen right now: Black Lives Matter and Direct Relief. So we are supporting obviously Black Lives Matter as well as uh, frontline healthcare workers who are battling the COVID nineteen. Uh, pandemic. So please donate. I will read out your name. Uh, if you have questions for Roger or Justine, put them in the chat, please, and we will read them out. Um, but let's get going, guys. Where are so, we headed? Kings Canyon. So we are uh, going to be doing some rank today. We're going to be pulling Mirage <laughs> out of bronze. So we're going to be putting him to silver. Hopefully. Rank. So. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a we, we made a new account so we can play with you and get some That's some smart. bronze. That's smart. Yeah. I'll never be. Okay, well this is funny because someone actually in the chat was like, "Who's gonna be playing race?" So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that to me. <laughs> you mean ranked because I'm a ranked as in like really smelly like that's rank, right? Because I'm <laughs> I'm on your team. Is that like a very British phrase? I've never heard it here. Rank? Really? You've never heard that? That's rank. No, it's... as in, I, I hear it in the UK a lot, but I always figured it was ah. one of those words that never really... It's like... here too, it's just not as common, I feel like. Yeah. Because I said I'm... stacked yesterday, and no one knew what I meant. You said what? I stacked it. Stacked it? I fell over. Uh -oh. oh, have fun. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that. That's a <laughs> 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 um, All right. All right. Are you dropping spice? Are you it. dropping? We can make it. <laughs> yeah, we can make it. Uh, it's like semi spicy, but yeah, we'll just get warmed up, get up a get a couple games, mm -hmm. and uh, this is that should also, be. Is that a British term? Rank. Spicy? Is that something? Uh, are we we dropping spicy? <laughs> I think it. I think it originally was. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very pervasive thing on the internet. I think. Spice Girls kind of a thing. Yeah. I get oh, it. That's, Again, that's, I'm, that's still a very important culture. Super cultured. That's why I knew about rank. Because, yeah. Body hey, look at me, uh, I've already got a... Uh... Come on. Oh boy, this is gonna be... So when was the last time you played Apex? How about this weather? Isn't this amazing? <laughs> Very warm in Southern California. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> So just so I can know, like whose whose screen is being like streamed at this point, like in terms of like what the uh, what the folks who are tuning in and watching this are going to see. No, uh, it's gonna be the guy right here that you're looking at. Okay, good. That's yeah. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. All I'm gonna do is follow you until someone kills me. I think that's. No, no, no. We're gonna get some wins here. We're gonna get some dubs. Okay. Uh, question from chat, uh, not normal, but magical, says, Justine, can you say the wholesome Watson, Watson line, I did it, Papa? Aww. Did it, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> That's my it's favorite one, favorite. I actually have that equipped, That's too. one of my favorites. Yeah. My, my new favorite is, uh, burn. with Watson and Caustic. Science was a win! That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask about how you guys, um kind of add in extra content and how you're managing to work from home because obviously everyone is working from home it's quite nice to be able to see like the inside of everyone's houses 
Um, how have you managed to sort of adapt your your work, basically? No problem. Well, luckily, right when the lockdown happened, I pulled and got more soundproofing and a better mic and much better technology in general. My computer, my MacBook, uh, was seven, eight years old. It sounded like it was doing some heavy breathing anytime I opened it. Um, so that was not the best for recording. Um, so I got a new computer and um, I'm in my very, very tiny closet at recording. And um, we One just had our first so recording session Let's from home way. for Apex three, four weeks ago. Um, and it went pretty well. Um, yeah. They seemed happy with it and we just Sorry, zoomed. And um, you'll hear it. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna <laughs> ask, do you just like record stuff by yourself and send it off or do you have that person in your ear kind of asking for, you for different reads? For a, a bunch of people looking for things, yeah. The writers were on, um, voice director was on, some uh, tech people, some sound people. Nice. Roger, what about you? Looks like some people. Um, I'm sorry, so I know you're playing too. I know, and I was just realizing, I'm like, this is such a bad idea. Like, this whole stream is just going to be, like, it's just going to be a visual of me kind of going. Huh? <laughs> and, and all of a I'm like, I literally, was like, all of a sudden I'm looking around and I'm like, I'm completely by myself. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. I'm like, I don't know where my teammates have gone. I've got to go find them. Just follow the ping. Yeah, there you go. And, and by ping, you mean, oh, the yellow dot. Okay, I'll go follow that. <laughs> Um, uh, so work from home has been something like, so for me working from home, um, uh, I, I've been fortunate through necessity uh, as early as like 2006, 2007 in there um, to set up a home studio, studio, basically treating a room in the house to, to, to be available for broadcast quality audio for retail clients, um, where it was becoming sort of problematic and it was sort of advantageous for me to... Uh, to do that from home so i've been set up for a long time to be able to do that sort of thing so it it, it was nice to not necessarily be scrambling uh by the way speaking of scrambling i think i'm running around the coliseum to try to get to you guys oh. I've clearly gone the wrong way it's okay you can uh meet us over on this side here cool i'll see you guys in an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> i could be there in no time thank goodness they're say, not you're doing so much better than I was doing. I would be dead by this time. Well, no, it's only because I've literally been off the map and not with my squad mates. So I like to, I take pride in living the longest because I basically hide under a flight of stairs and just cry. Oh, that's the crying strat. I know it, I know it. Yeah, it's just, you know, a little puddle of my own tears. We're calling it tears. Let's go this way. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm already nervous. You're doing great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> By just, just surviving. <laughs> so just survive. Because there's no deficit at the beginning. We start at zero RP. You can only go up. Go up, yeah. The there only way is up. That's so encouraging. Oh, so <laughs> the good news is you can't get any worse. Watch that spot. <laughs> um, you can. You really can. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way that I would be the way to find how to get worse. <laughs> oh, question from chat. Um, where is it? Uh, Mark Abrahams asks, way. "How much do you ad lib when you're recording voice lines for Apex?" And are you are you allowed to ad lib? Watson. Roger probably ad libs a lot more than I do. Um, I barely ad lib because much is in French, and I am not fluent in French, and <laughs> and they they definitely help me out with that. Um, I did take French in school in high school, but it's been a while, so. That's one of the Huge things I'm doing question. during quarantine. Let's I'm, I'm taking way. French again because this has really inspired me to uh, get better at my French, this character. <laughs> um, I, but I, I, I don't do that much ad-libbing. There's so many electrical I'm puns with Watson. So I just love them so Heads much. Up. The writers are I'm so good um, that I don't do much at all, but I know Roger does a ton and they're, I love his ad-libs. That's, and that's kudos to the entire Respawn team for even just like, allowing that sort of like development of the character character to happen because it wasn't it wasn't anything like when i booked the gig it wasn't as if i was going in going oh man i'm just going to come up with so many funny little quips and one-liners kind of thing but we in working together 
with the writing staff present, that kind of thing. We started to kind of work around the, when he kind of flubs his own lines because he's, you know, covering for something or thinking too quick and, you know, going faster than his, his tongue can kind of keep up. Um, that was just something that started to happen as a result of us getting in the booth and, and kind of messing around with finding the character was a lot of the little things that happen at the end of a line are just me kind of in that moment trying to just do something a little self-deprecating or, you know, he comes off with a very arrogant kind of like, you know, upfront sort of a line and then he finishes it with something a little bit like, you know, I don't really have that much confidence kind of thing. So it's been a lot of fun. It's a really fun character to get to go in and do just because I know I'm going to, we're going to all find some stuff that, that when all of us in the room are cracking up, we're like, okay, that's, that's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah it works really well. Uh, we're getting a few questions in the chat. Um, Villain, Vinex? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, username, uh, what are your favorite voice lines? Um, uh, Roger, what are yours? Ladies first. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, well, I, of course. The line is, um, is, uh, the, the, any, anything ecstatic, anything static, anything electrical, but, um, it's, you know, I love the, let your light shine bright. That's one of my favorites. She's so light and, and she's got oh. so many, you know, things to say. Let's so that's in a different direction. Uh, someone in the chat just asked, is there a motorcycle playing with them? No, that's just my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I tried moving my mic. Um, my laptop, it, it, like, it is a gaming laptop, which is great, but unfortunately, by nature of being a gaming what? laptop, it doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, how funny. Literally, as you said that, we should go here. A lawnmower kicked off outside, and I'm like, <laughs> that couldn't possibly be. Is that your laptop? <laughs> I mean, it's quiet down now. It's all good. Um, oh, and uh, we've got a couple of donations. Thank you very much. Uh, the links are on screen bit.ly slash bf slash blm to donate to Black Lives Matter, um, or bit.ly slash gs dash covid to donate to direct relief helping frontline healthcare workers. For direct relief, Sheba Matthew sends twenty dollars. Thank you very much. And on and Was in Sheba Matthews S H I B A. Uh yes. Yes, she's a wonderful human being. She's uh, uh, a a very nice supporter of uh, of all of this. So thank you, Sheba. That's very nice of you to thank do. You. She's an educator and she's a hard worker and oh, and I'm about to die. Here we go. Um, this is what I do well, best, you guys. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you've got Max and Jordan. Um, and for Black Lives Matter, Dexter Brooks sends $25. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah, links are on screen. We'll be doing shout outs. If you have questions for Justine or Roger, let us know. Put them in the chat. We'll read them out. For some reason, I'm not seeing the chat on the Twitch. Twitch, interesting. Um, Eric, voice in the sky. Um, can you text me the answer to that, please? We're moving. <laughs> oh. right, we gotta get out of here. Oh, do you have it? Maybe everyone's just in YouTube chat because that's the one that we've been pushing. Oh, maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, you got oh, it. No. Oh, oh, this is not good. Get back in the ring. I won't make it. Oh, no. uh, let's yeah, try to get a point to you guys. No. One question. Um, have either of you been recognized while talking on the phone? For example, ordering a pizza or pork chops? Pork chops. <laughs> Is there a way I could have pork chops delivered? I was unaware of this. Look, it's the, it's the new normal. You can get cocktails to go now. That's true. I, I, I think true. pork chops are next on the menu. Just take that. Set the portal. Go get I'm it. not gonna change my. Order. What's that? Sorry, what were you gonna say? I have not been recognized because I don't use I don't use my French accent. Picked up our teammates. <laughs> so, but maybe Roger has because he sounds a lot like. I don't. You know, it's like I was just gonna say. I think I need to change my gamer tag to awaiting recovery. Um, 
to go with a more <laughs> appropriate gamer tag for me. Uh, I have never been, I had one person many, many years ago recognize me and it was the weirdest thing for um, Batman, which kind of was a trip because I don't think I sound anything like Batman when I'm just on a customer service call, but, um, Wait, but nobody, uh, I'm gonna have to find out if there's pork chop delivery in my area <laughs> and just keep ordering pork chops until somebody goes, do you do you play video games? That kind of a thing, we'll see. Um, I, don't usually I was do gonna say. Oh, sorry. oh no, you go ahead. I don't usually do characters that, that sound like myself, myself actually. I usually do characters that are little kids or people with accents. I'm thinking about it now, and yeah, so none of my characters really sound like me. I don't think. No, but I guess maybe you, you this like the, um, the tone, like the tone or the tinge of it. Yeah, you can kind of hear it. But I was gonna say that. Um, so my mom is obsessed with say yes to the dress. <laughs> and okay. so, yeah, but, you know, so is my mom, and I told my mom. Is it is it still airing with my voice on there? Like, are they still are they still airing that show? Still airing that okay. show, but I don't think it has a narrator anymore. Yeah, they got because oh, they got really? rid of me years ago. Yeah, years ago, I I I haven't done it for years. You can still hear you on the. We can still hear you on the reruns. They play the yeah. reruns all. Yeah, in the UK, there's pretty much a channel dedicated to it, and my mom watches it all the time. And I remember going back, um, I think it was about a year or so, and she was just watching it in the living room. And I went in and I was like, wait a minute. I know that voice. I know that voice. Yeah, that was a fun gig. That was a really neat, um, that was a really neat gig. That was also kind of indicative of like a change in the industry for the most part when they really did start to kind of shift from a lot of narration. A lot of promos these days don't even, have voice actors on them it's kind of like where things have kind of shifted we you know there was a time when narrating you know cable shows was was my bread and butter um between the the crasher shows on diy and then that show we had at one point i think we had four different sort of spin-off series of, of oh, CS and we had CS atlanta um I'm trying to think we did a couple different versions of it you know, sort of throughout the history of the show, but uh, it was a fun, that was a fun thing to be a part of. It's my favorite thing at a, at a fan convention to sit there and always finish with that one, like Shit. getting the having the honor of of naming off like a whole bunch of video game characters, but then also <laughs> in the very end, going and of course narrator for say yes to the dress, you know that kind of thing. Oh no! What happened? Dang it, guys! I'm oh, so what good. happened? <laughs> Just a second. Got a lot of points second. though. We'll, we'll get you uh, to a silver pretty soon. I, In the only first second. Game? That's way to go, guys. Because gold's not achievable. First place. What are we doing here? Yeah, we can we can, we can make it. All right. It's got to believe. Yeah. Because that got us to. I like to point out. Zero damage was dealt to me. That's what that stat is for. <laughs> That's what that zero means. damage dealt to me. Nobody hurt me. That's how good I am at this. <laughs> I didn't realize it was such a good stealth game. That's it. Yeah, game. there you go. Um, there, right. there, there needs to be a category of Fs given and zero for, for <laughs> <laughs> respawn given zero, Fs given zero. <laughs> um, question from Daniel Moreno on the chat: Would you like for your characters to evolve over time, or do you prefer to explore different parts of their personalities? I think as they're originally written. Roger, you go first on that one. You know, I mean, it's an interesting thing. I'm like, like, I mean, I, that's really not up to me, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy just to be a part of it. So, I mean, if the idea that the character just kind of remains where he's at, um, I, I'd of course be completely fine with it. But if, if there is the, the chance to evolve, I mean, I, he's an interesting one to have that kind of a relationship with. I, I, I wonder how that would work. Uh, for a character like Mirage, because I think we kind of like him sort of simple. Um, and maybe, you know, it's like, I'm, sh I'm sure there's some darkness there. We know we've got some uh, some mommy issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it, but, but, it, but of course, I mean, like as an actor, of course I want, I want a chance to, to sink, you're always wanting a chance to kind of sink your teeth into something. So I, I, I would 
of course, mm -hmm. welcome the chance for the character to evolve more. But um, but I, I wonder what they've got in store. We we rarely find out until we show up for the gig what we're doing. I mean, that's and that's by design. Mm. Uh, co question from the chat, just to kind of uh, let them know. So they're asking who's playing. Uh, so <laughs> the picture that you can see is our very own Max, who is the motorcycle. I didn't realize that that's what his mo that's what the motorcycle was that people were referring to earlier. <laughs> um, but also my laptop, loud as hell. Um, who's playing with Jordan and Roger. Um, Justine and I are here for moral support, monitoring the chat, questions, send them over and we will answer, uh, well, they will answer, I will put them to Roger and Justine. We have another donation, uh, $25 from Richie to uh, Direct Relief. Thanks to Justine and Roger for joining GameSpot for some good causes. Roger is one of my faves in the biz from Sonic to selling Dodge Rams. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that donation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the donation. Our Richie or another Richie? Just uh, Richie. No surname. Huh. Um, ooh. Uh, Michael Neves says, how far out do you guys record for? I'm pretty good at this. Okay, I, I do love So for like season five or something, how? Can you say that? Roger, are we allowed to say that? You can. Know. You don't have to answer. <laughs> well, I mean, like in a generic sense, maybe. Like, so, how far out are we recording for, like, say, a, another season or anything involving the game? Mm -hmm. That that's just a production thing that I think. I mean, that that's that's completely up to every independent production that we've ever worked on. I mean, it's like sometimes they could do stuff years in advance. Sometimes they could do stuff weeks in advance of having to launch something or release something or polishing something up i mean it, it really just depends but and there's no i mean i don't i don't think we're you know di I, I don't think we're divulging anything uh, too top secret it, it, that's just a production thing i mean like i've done cartoons where i thought oh there's no way this is going to be you know out anytime soon and then literally like nine months later they're they're releasing it and you, you just realize man there's it just depends on production timelines and things like that it, it, it varies i think for uh, apex what we sorry what we can say um talk to some of the writers about this and sometimes they do want to put something in for a season and they can't because the localization takes so long i think the localization for the other languages takes at least three months so wow. i know that yeah with the quests know that you know a lot of people were disappointed that our voices weren't um saying those lines of the quest but it takes so long to get everything approved and to get all of the other languages so hopefully in the future we'll do some quests you never know i'm i'm hoping at some point because i love those quests i love those storylines so sad when watson <laughs> got injured yeah, yeah. Mm. Spoiler alert! <laughs> well, this was last week, or the week before. That's years in internet time. That's true. Uh, question for Roger. Yes. Who would you like to see as one of Mirage's brothers if he ever comes to Apex? Troy Baker or Nolan North? <laughs> yes. So we had, we had Troy on yesterday and he did say to say hello. He misses you. He also asked you to say something. One sec, what was it? Uh oh, uh oh. This guy. I took a note. He said that. He said that's what a man does. He asks. Me <laughs> he says he really enjoys that goof. From my short-lived uh, manly grooming podcast uh, spoof that I did on Instagram, there. Yeah, yeah, that's what a man does. And then I sang this. <laughs> that's what a man does. That's what a man does. I live alone. <laughs> I live alone. <laughs> point that out. So I'm I'm in a house by myself doing just that now. Yeah, I miss Troy too. It's like we haven't seen each other in a long time. And the answer, of course, to either one of those individuals being a part of this game is yes. I mean, take your pick. I uh, I recently did an animation session with uh, with Nolan uh, from home, and uh, and it was just fun, kind of being back in the booth per se uh, with with that guy and cracking each other up and all that stuff. So, yes, I would welcome either one of them. That would be a blast. Why not both? Roger, as a, as a voice actor, do you, do you find yourself talking to yourself often? <laughs> yeah, I, 
I guarantee you, when I was when I was delivering pizzas, I was still talking to myself. <laughs> because I was I was literally in my hands the other Thank day. You. I don't know if this is teen or just voice actor. I was just organically the the voice came out of me to give a voice to one of the bubbles, and I was just like, Wait, where did this come from? And that's how you get the job done. <gasps> Boy. No, it sounds it sounds about right. That would be me. I'm I'm just yeah. jumping with uh, the Gusa here. There we go. Yeah, we're doing the boogie, the two step boogie. Ooh. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See that I'm really good at. <laughs> that the I tea, the tea bag. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. The tea bagging is that's that's I can I can I can, I can push a button. Oh wait. Oh. I think I hit somebody. <laughs> Got you. I believe in you. This won't hurt. Hold on. Yeah, either oh, awaiting yeah. arrival or reviving. That's gonna be the new gamer tag. <laughs> my favorite thing. So I didn't. I play yeah, on. Um... It's yours from the person you killed. <laughs> okay. Because I play on PlayStation and I didn't realize um, for the longest time. But if you press down on the touchpad, it brings up the keyboard. Ah. And so because I'm usually dead most of the time, I just wrote. Help me. I'm sorry. And then it reads it out in a robotic voice. I love it. <laughs> and so that's what that's what the experience of uh, playing Apex with me is. It's just me apologizing. <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm the guy who goes like, hey, I got a Mozambique. That's good, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay. I'm going to throw it at somebody so I actually do some damage. Placing a portal. <laughs> it's got Cora. more internet power than you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's meme potential was pretty high. Oh yeah. Alex Corrales asks, uh, Roger, do you get along with crypto? Because there's some beef in the game. A little bit of beef. A little bit uh, of beef. You know, I think uh, he's got a thing where he thinks I'm old. And uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't really appreciate that. Don't really appreciate the judgment <laughs> in his tone. Um, you know, I guess... Uh, no. What's that? How old is Mirage? I don't even... I mean, really, beauty is timeless when you think about it. So... <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't think I even know that. I. They I definitely assume... have ages, but I don't remember all the ages. Let me let me look it up. Let me... Yeah, just like, know. Mentally? like mentally or physically? <laughs> Mirage Apex Age. Uh, they I don't even know... Is that much younger? Oh, uh, Mirage is 30. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Apex, Apex, oh, the, the headline on this is Apex Legends Lore now includes Mirage's dating profile. What? <laughs> um, yeah, a, hang on. Oh, man, is that, is the ring still closing? Reloading. That was the last one. Nice I hear uh, uh, it is. We got this. Okay. Shit. Be okay. Yeah, you say that. <laughs> uh, we'll be okay. Clearly, you've never played with me before. Question from the chat: Can you both do your best Mozambique here? Mozambique here. Very good. Mozambique here. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, they they tend to like. Um, in post-processing, they kind of lower my pitch from around, yeah. but all of yeah. my lines are pork chops. I love pork chops. And then they lower it and make them sound sexier, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's that hard. <laughs> yeah. Wait, people in the chat are asking for the dating profile. I want to know it too. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> EA.com. Oh, oh wow! It it really is uh, cool. solace dating. Okay. Uh oh. Name. So I just talk like I normally like. Ooh. Oh wait a minute. Seeking. Seeking women age twenty five to I don't know twenty five to alive. Twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real. It's quite, it's quite in-depth, this dating profile. 
I want to say that I think I do think I remember seeing this. I'm wondering if we even I don't know that we've recorded anything for it though. I can't remember. Maybe on the Mirage Voyage there I might hope have been you Easter do eggs. Record it. That'd be so awesome. I really hope you record it. That. Besides the bar, my side job is actually my passion, and I'm considered legendary when it comes to my passion. When I'm not doing that, I'm murdering pork chops and flirting with some delicious drinks. I don't actually murder pork chops. That's just weird. Unless you're into that kind of thing. Unless you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. I think I might have gotten seven points for damage dealt. Look, it's better. Than, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every every little helps. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I don't I don't know that either of my colleagues would say that right now. <laughs> it's like, he actually has to do a little bit of something for it to help. So, I mean, actually, in that last game, you saved my life during like one of the skirmishes. You gave me by like three seconds your, to uh, heal. So by, by by drawing the fire of the person who was trying to kill you. Just yeah, there you go. Just draw to bamboozle and Yeah. Stop there you go. <laughs> Whether it be your clone or your your body. <laughs> Sounds about uh, right. Good. Question for Justine from Prabhat Singh. Uh, Justine, can you share your experience on what it was like working with JB Blanc, who plays Caustic, since they have that surrogate father-daughter relationship? In Apex and most video games, we don't record together. Um, unfortunately, I wish we recorded together because it would be so much fun. But um, we record all of our lines by ourselves, and the only time I get to see these guys in the recording studio is saying hello or goodbye, you know, when they come in and when I go out. So we, we didn't, I have never even seen him in a recording studio, <laughs> but um, just at parties and, uh, you know, get together. Um, I love the relationship between Caustic close. and Watson. I love their father-daughter relationship. I think it's so cool that we're here. exploring that. Um, and I think she's the only one that, that really uh, moves him up and makes him a little less um, silly and, and gassy. <laughs> we got 30 seconds left. Someone's out there. <laughs> How's the match going? It's going pretty well. Yeah. I think I got seven points for hitting someone with a bullet. Very proud of you. Either that, I, I might have actually tickled them, to be honest. So maybe I got seven points for tickling. Well, <laughs> at the rate that we're going, I think you'll make silver. Right okay. Yeah. I feel really? like it. I mean, yeah. You guys do very well. Uh, Isabella Lopez, hello, Justine and Roger. What are your, what's your favorite thing about your character's personality? Justine. Um, oh, oh. Love, I mean, I, I love, I love how bright and, um, and how positive she is. I love the electrical puns. Obviously, they're the best. Um, I love, I love that she is a little bit devious with her, with her ultimates and, and, uh, and she'll just, you know, bop you on the nose and then there will be electrical spark um so yeah she's she's great and i love that she's french because it it makes me very nostalgic for my uh for my french class days roger uh you know it's funny i've i've had um i've had people ask like of all the characters that i've you know voiced um Who's, who am I most like? Sorry, I, I, like my right brain, left brain right now is, is really No, I, I, I understand I can't think when I play too. I'm on a 56k modem here, kind of going, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to stay alive and not harm my teammates. Um, I've had people ask, you know, what, what character might you be like uh, the most? And, and honestly, the, the little self-deprecating elements of Mirage are very much me. Um, that's that's what I like about voicing this character. And there we go. Oh, waiting. Um, <laughs> let me see. I got you. You got me. Well, in a second. Oh in no. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Jordan, uh, on you. No, I, the, what I love about Mirage is that that sort of front of like. Um, oh well. All right, guys. <laughs> what, what? Where did you okay. rank? My program feed is like a little pixelated, so I can't see the finer details. Uh, fifth place. <laughs> 31 oh, damage! Oh, 31! 
31 points. Mm-hmm. Max is just carrying us, right. carrying us to top five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as we boring. keep getting this high, then we should be able to make it. Hell yeah. Uh, what I, what I love about love about Mirage is just those little self deprecating elements because I think that's a very that's what makes him not just the uh, the sort of goofball that he is the fact that you know that he's kind of you know going oh uh, maybe I'm not so great you know um, at the tail end of things or, or hearing that little bit of self doubt I love that element because I think that's mm. that's true of most human beings we all have our little insecurities and things like that and if we posture to be all tough and whatnot it's like you're you're one horrible match away from being shown you're not <laughs> you're not you're not that hot uh so i love that little element to uh to his uh to his line that's uh that's my favorite thing about mirage is just that the bravado followed by the maybe i'm not so bravado-esque all right question from our very own tamor hussein which video game franchise do you most want to do a voice in roger you go first with that I mean, I've all, it's like, that's always an interesting question. I mean, really and truly so much of what we do is like, it's the gig. And so, I mean, the, the pat answer for me is always the next one. Um, me too. Just like, anything. I'm happy to be working, right? Yeah. And, and so, and the idea too, like I've been so fortunate and even just to like, even just to be this age and get to go like, well, in my career and say stuff like that feels like so weird um, because we love doing the job. So the idea that that there's something else ahead is like, it's a luxury that I don't think you want to sit and believe too much in. Um, so for me, it's the next one. And, and the, mm. the nice thing about this medium over the on-camera world really uh, is that between animation and video games, it I mean, the we're limited by our imagination and that's it. And there are so many creative people creating so many incredible projects that every time I start to wonder, man, I wonder if we've just plateaued about all the things that we can do, or it's like, no, there's a new way to tell a story. There's a new way to visually do this. Now we've got VR kind of completely changing the way we do things. So it's, I mean, there's, you know, the idea that I would pick and choose a particular franchise to be a part of when I've already been so fortunate to be a part of I mean, just how big Apex is, it's just mm. insane. So I don't know, I, I, whichever one would have me, I'd be more than happy to be a part of, so. Uh, we've got two very nice comments for Justine. Uh, so Adrian Yo-Yo says, uh, Sally, can you tell Justine that I'm French and that her French accent is great? No joke. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I had a, a very, very strict teacher from Alsace. And if our accents weren't to her liking we would get in big trouble <laughs> so that that helped i think a lot uh and the other one is elodie says i just want to say to justine that you are such a huge inspiration for me and i'm a massive fan of yours and your work thank you so much all right guys you just leave the game as soon as we're done like that and just go back to the lobby does that help you guys out in yes. keeping things in here okay cool thank you yeah i kind of figured i was oh. i was like oh, i'm sandbagging yet again <laughs> You're doing great. Uh, we got a couple more donations. Uh, so links are on the screen right now. We are raising money for Black Lives Matter as well as COVID-19 uh, going to direct relief there. So links are bit.ly slash GS dash BLM for Black Lives Matter, bit.ly slash GS dash COVID for direct relief. Uh, $20 from our very own Eric Tay for uh, COVID relief. Uh, shout outs to two of the many wonderful voice actors slash characters in an awesome game. Thanks for coming on today and hanging out with us. Let's get to bamboozling and making Papa proud. Thank you, oh, Tay. Darn. That was yeah. kind of, that was way, that was working every single possible connection <laughs> to the game in one method. That was cool. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, and twenty dollars to Black Lives Matter from Katie Cooper. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Katie. Know. Thank you. <laughs> Chat says, uh, Brandon Hernandez says, uh, Tamor Hussein, who works with us, needs to do some voice work for the new Bloodborne if they ever make another one. So what advice would you give to people if they wanted to start out in voice work? Justine. So I, I'm one of our friends, D. Bradley Baker, who's an incredible voice actor who just does the most same creature voices. He has a wonderful website called I want to be a voice actor.com and it is A to Z 
so many great tips, tricks about you know starting out being a voice actor to the working voice actor to the the pro voice actor. Sometimes if I have a callback, I'll go back and look at that website and just remind myself of certain bullet points that I want to remember when going in. Um, it goes from setting up your home studio to uh, make sure you don't wear a Mickey Mouse shirt when you're going into a Nickelodeon audition, which is yep. smart. <laughs> yeah. So I really recommend anyone that's even about it to to that website, but also take acting classes. Um, so many voiceover classes. Uh, Mary Lynn Wisner, who's an incredible casting director, and she does um, working pro classes um, on Zoom right now because of the uh, lockdown. Um, a fantastic resource. Uh, her company is called Voices Voice Casting. And there's there's so many um, voiceover coaches. My One of my voiceover coaches, Lori Allen, who uh, is on SpongeBob and was on Family Guy, she does um, Skype and Zoom coaching online. Um, great coach. And you know, this is, this acting is all about imagination and being able to create a character with your voice. Yeah. Wait, what happened there? Um, yeah, if I was making nothing happen. Yeah. Nothing, nothing <laughs> happened? Just pretend nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> Two P2020s is not going to get me anywhere. No. Here's how that works. Had guns. I was just trying to use my tactical to kill people. Uh, I literally thought one of you guys was just like trolling me by like shooting at my feet and uh and so I like foolishly was like oh wait you guys are trying to get my because I mean it was just like drop in all of a sudden bullets at my feet and I turn around to see who it is and it's I got a nice finishing move straight uh, away about 15 seconds of uh but again zero damage dealt it'd be like that actually I have a question uh during this whole coronavirus pandemic, how has that affected your guys' work? We have no choice but to win. Here? Just you. Andrew, you go first. Oh, um, well, obviously, you've got a lot of different companies in a lot of different ways that um, have been affected by the shutdown. Uh, very, very, very fortunate that on this side of the industry, I mean, in the on-camera world, it's done. Uh, and with uh, voiceover work and animation video games we've managed to get some sessions still going and while it's nowhere near what it was prior to the uh, to the lockdowns um i'm thrilled at the chance to be able to work because i know way too many colleagues who are who work in different sort of facets of the on-camera world that are just they're just out of work i mean there's and there's no option and so for us to have been able to find ways to do things i had a, a, a session this morning uh, animation session from home and it's like to be able to do that and then to go do stuff like this and not sit in traffic and all that it's a, mm -hmm. a very position so the work has slowed for sure but very grateful and very fortunate to be able to, to still have opportunities to, to to salvage some work here and there Allie. I I think all the most of the promo jobs were from home way like my my promo job that I have um, has always been from home so I've been lucky about that but animation and the video games and some commercials were from home but most I've done have been in actual studios so um it, it's definitely different um I I miss I miss seeing people in person I miss um able to in a, a real studio but um but Roger said we're so lucky because so many people are not working when you're um, like getting attached to a project, like, do you have any idea what it's going to be? Or do you just kind of get a call for, hey, we, we need a voice for this character. Here are some vague things about them to help find that voice. But you don't, do you know what project it's going to be attached to? I think it totally depends on the project. Um, this game, I had no idea what it was going to be. The code names were very, uh, you know, secretive and didn't know when I auditioned that it was going to be Apex Legends. I also auditioned and started recording before the game came out, um, even though my character didn't come out until last July. Um, I started recording 
a few months before the game came out. So I really had no idea. I didn't really know much about my character besides the fact that she was French and that she was a scientist. Um, loved electricity and that she liked some puns. I think I did two puns in the audition and a really quick audition um, from home. And I didn't think anything of it because what I try and do is when I audition, I try and forget it like the day after because I don't want to think about all the things that I have to so, um when sometimes when my agent calls or emails and says that I've booked a job, I like I have no recollection of that <laughs> I'll just, like, because, um, because I, I uh, can, you know, forget it. They might be one. Enemy down. It's like, oh, it's it's getting spicy. So, I don't know if you want me to, like, everyone's looking very serious. I'm getting away. <laughs> <laughs> you can always Actually... pop. It's like Justine and I just chatting, and then you three going. I know. Question, <laughs> because I'm just trying to not screw up. Sure. Getting some questions about Ezio and Mirage. I'll save those for when you in between rounds, Roger. Okay, sure. <laughs> so you can concentrate. Well, no, I, I don't even remember what the question was. That. Uh... Oh, oh, in oh, terms was... of, I wanted to say too, this was actually kind of an issue that, that the union was trying to address mm -hmm. when it came to sort of intellectual property and, and actors not being aware of games that they were going in on. And I had to call my agent before to say, did you look at the audition copy that you just sent to me? Um, because the subject matter was so highly questionable. And, and there does come a point where you might want to sit there and think, do I want to be a part of this or not? Um, and I'm all for, you know, freedom in all forms of expression, but it, there's also a, a, something to be said for whether or not you're comfortable being a part of something. Um, and uh, and I've, I've, I've done so many little like kid series and things like that, that I have to talk to my agent every now and then go like, hey, look, I'm gonna go from being, you know, on an Amazon, you know, preschool series to screaming the F word over and over and over again on this game. And I don't know that we want to do that right now. Maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't be a part of this. Or there, there's there been stuff where I'm like, <laughs> like the the visual description of what was happening and, and my agent hadn't really like looked into it. And all of a sudden he's cracking up calling me going, yeah, no, we're not going to submit on this. Um, and so actors sometimes don't know and it can become an issue because it, it results in some pretty awkward scenarios where you want the gig and you want to show up and you want to work and then you get there and it might be something that you morally object to and and that's up to the individual to be able to make that decision and you can't do that if you don't know what you're going in on so they're trying to find a way of not giving up their industry secrets um through the casting process but also you know benefiting actors to let them know what it is they're about to be a part of mm. oh, you're right Shit, sorry. Shoot, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. No. Oh. Wait, Where was, was I that? shooting that person? No, I was, wasn't I? Uh, he was already down. The moment where you engaged the new squad and I was still leaving by. I'm like, I'm coming, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I think, was there two different squads? I think so. I think you got pincered a little bit. 74 damage dealt, that's twice as much as the only other game where damage has been dealt by this guy right here. <laughs> See? You're getting better already. You, yeah. just need, you just needed some hands-on teaching from these two. Statistically, you know, I'm twice as good as I've ever been. That's which is a 100% <laughs> that's increase, more than 100% increase in math stuff, yeah. you know? Uh, oh, this is a good question. Uh, this is from Jamie French. Uh, do you enjoy listening to your own voice after you do a project like can you listen to yourself back um, when i first played apex um it was at ea play and i hadn't heard any of the play of watson yet it was really exciting because it was this new character coming out and that was very exciting for me but sometimes it's hard <laughs> because you're like oh gosh i will done this instead or why did, why did they choose that take you know, i did like 50 other takes i could have cho chosen another take but um but sometimes it, it's it's fun you know especially on a cartoon like if i'm watching a cartoon with my friends kids 
and they, you know, start freaking out because, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and, and they're like, oh my god, you know, it's, it's really adorable. So, I think it depends, if, if I'm just watching it by myself, I can analyze it like crazy, but if it's my mom or with a friend or especially kids, um, love it, it's, it's much more fun. Roger, I think you? same goes. I mean, it's it's so funny. Like one of the neat things about th this aspect of the business is that it's such a huge collaborative process that I always try to at least get a copy of the game and start playing through it because we're so limited in what we get to experience. Um, oh, I'm Jump Master. No, we're relinquishing <laughs> that. No. Uh, we're relinquishing that. Let's press and hold that. Sorry, guys. I'm sure we've probably already passed over where a nice hot and spicy jump should have been uh, <laughs> taken care of. Um, no, I, I think it's up to the individual to, you know, whether or not they're comfortable with it. But because I don't get to see what we're a part of, because it's almost always theater of the mind at the time we're doing these recording sessions, um, I really enjoy watching an animated series when it comes out. I enjoy watching, you know, or, or playing through a game that, that I, you know, provided a voice for. Only because I've I've made the uh, the little comment. It's like, it's like the job is birthing out this vocal baby, and then I hand it over to a, a group of people who sort of determine whether or not that baby is going to be cute or ugly, or you know have a weird uh, you know arm growing out of its forehead or something. <laughs> vocally. And, what kind of babies uh, have you been looking at? <laughs> very strange babies. Um, and so it's it's neat to see what the entire creative team developed and sort of executed and, and, and watching the, the sort of like collective creative vision come to fruition is a neat thing. And of course, just like Justine, I every line that I hear that I've ever delivered, I I almost always go, I could have polished that up or done a better job or done something differently or you know, it's but that's the that's the 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 nature of it being a collabor a collaborative environment where it's a lot of people are gonna you know, get a say as to how this this thing sort of comes out in the end, and that that to me is the the fun part of kind of going, oh man, look at that! I didn't know that that's what my character even looked like, you know, which has happened many times. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is this is a question that's come up a couple times. Uh, Justine, what do you think about Watson being one of the top legends in professional Apex? I think it's so cool. I love that. <laughs> Um, I I just think that's the the coolest thing because I'm such a bad Apex player that it's amazing <laughs> that the character that I voice is one of the top. Um, the last time we went to the studio uh, as a as a big voice cast, um, played uh, as Watson and had about seven devs behind me coaching me because I'm so terrible and I actually won, which was so exciting. I was the champion. And I beat I beat the head of of Respot. I beat, <gasps> I beat it, which was ex really exciting. <laughs> but I mean, I think that they went easy on me. Um, it was a uh, big win. Exciting. Portal <laughs> place. Oh, well, there's a Arvin in the chat says, Justine, can you tell us one of your jokes? Um. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, but they've been they've been requesting this for quite a while. So I sometimes I forget I have available to player and what is coming up, and I don't want to say anything that. Um, Ooh, I think there's a trap. Yes, that yeah, that's is, a that good. That's a good thing. point. Please. How about a good, just a good knock knock joke then? Yeah. Um. She's got a great, she's got a great, um, great, uh, I like, I like, um, uh, the, I'm currently at the top of my game. Get it? <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. Oh, <laughs> spot on. That was very good. little thing, she has a lot of cringeworthy dad jokes. <laughs> it definitely does. That's fine, though. We're all well, she fights until it hurts. <laughs> I saw that. I think I literally saw a bumper sticker from where it was like, it, what was it like? It was, I think it was an electrician's vehicle, and it was like, 
you know how it's like you know plumbers do it till it this or you know musicians mm -hmm. do it till it this and it was like electricians do it till it hurts very good very good and i was like okay i get it hz that's brilliant <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Danny on PC said, Watson forgetting her jokes. Shocking. <laughs> oh, man. No. <laughs> Gotta go. Oh, uh, man. Sound like a dude says, do you have a favorite skin or it's look for your characters? And a question Ooh. for me, if, if that skin doesn't exist already, what would you like to see your character dressed up as? I'm thinking yeah. like hot dog, hot dog outfit. <laughs> pork chop outfit, obviously. Just a giant pork chop yeah. running around. Yeah, I think giant pork chop. Or either that, like, I don't know, bottle of hairspray for Mirage, maybe? Just like a nice bottle of hairspray or conditioner or something. Or a giant mirror. He'd love it as like a giant hand mirror. That'd be him. Good question, sounds like a dude. <laughs> I, I love the, the Watson cyber skin i thought that was so cool i love the the pink hair magenta hair um but i am I'm pushing for the electric eel costume Ooh. Want kind of electric eel thing like for halloween i really want us to all have different animal skins that we would we would be to as our characters that would be really fun you never know this could be in like five halloweens from now <laughs> So, Thanks for are we playing like a localized version? Because I see Revive, Revive, Revive for both of my squad mates. Is that what the... <laughs> Did you guys change? Are we... Uh... You got this. That's Spanish, right? You, what are you, doing? you got this. It's I'm Spanish, but you're doing great. Exactly. It's like, just keep going. <laughs> well, this All right, everybody. Is chasing me. What? <laughs> oh, uh, Gray Fox asks, have... Oh, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you place? Where'd you place this time? Uh, we uh, placed... Oh. A hundred... Still top 20. Damage. Still top 20. Uh, uh, Gray it. Fox asks, have Roger and Justine worked together on another project in the past, or is Apex the first one? The first! Yeah. 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 Is it the first time we've worked together? Is that what the question was? Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe so. Yeah, I think the first time that I met Justine was at that um, when we got a little uh, sort of tour of the the respawn the respawn uh, headquarters. Nice. Oh, uh, K Seven Droid, are you up for doing cosplay? Of your characters, <laughs> or any cat, or any character. If you could cosplay any character, who would it be? Um, I would love to, but there's there's a lot of uh, involvement with the cosplay for Watson. Um, if someone wanted to make me a costume <laughs> for Watson, I would be happy to wear it. Um, uh, I'm not a sewer at all, and um. Probably not. I love Halloween. I love making costumes for Halloween, like homemade costumes, like gluing things. And you know, I don't take I've been I don't take a bunch of really. grapes and a, and a salad. And um, <laughs> here I was. Um, this year I was a woman from Blue Man Group. So I do make a lot of my own costumes, but um, I feel like right if someone wanted time. to make me a Watson costume, I would not say no. I, I had an option, like an opportunity years and years and years ago when PlayStation was doing a, a really cool, like, uh, like pro gamer kind of commercial where they were taking all of these characters. It was called like Two Michael or Four Michael or something like that. And it was, it was in celebration of gamers. And, um, and they got like, I mean, like they had Solid Snake, they had, mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Drake, they had, I mean, like, had all these iconic sort of gaming characters, and they wanted Ezio um, to be in this commercial. And they contacted my agency, and they were like, we want to fly him out to Prague to do this live action commercial as Ezio. And I'm cracking up going, there's not enough bronzer in the world <laughs> to make me look <laughs> like this Italian, you know, lover boy, assassin guy. I'm like, you do know that I'm five foot five, right? Like, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> 
And they literally also brought me in on like the casting of that. It was the funniest thing. They had me, they wanted me to like show up to a casting and, the, and I did this on a day when they were also casting for Lara Croft uh, <laughs> in, the, in the commercial. And so here I am, I, I walk in in my like, you know, ball cap and cargo shorts, you know, to this like on camera casting facility, which is like basically my nightmare. And the, the, the waiting room is full of, Thanks. you know, beautiful women dressed as Lara Croft. <laughs> and it's like, and I'm, I'm there. <laughs> what they wanted me to do was to literally go in and start like mock flirting with these other characters oh. as Ezio. Oh, and yet the girl that they selected to do this with, I'm like looking up at her like this. Like, <laughs> You know, going like, yo, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Like, she's like three feet taller than I. And uh, so I, I always laugh when it comes to like cosplaying my own character. I just go, there, I do a good enough job just in interviews like this of ruining the characters that I've been a part of. So you don't want to see me <laughs> dressed up as it. So that's not. So, so far what Rinkusu and I do really well is just, just teabagging general ground here and there. That's... Uh, yeah, see, now I can see the gameplay there. That's good. Yeah, Do you ever so. wonder, like, <laughs> if, if video games are more realistic, what gaming characters' um, thighs would actually be like with all the, the teabagging and the squatting? Uh, that would be very powerful. Yeah, a lot of, like, uh, like defensive linemen in the NFL-sized tree trunk thighs, for sure. Uh, oh, we got a couple more donations. Uh, Links are on the screen and in the description if you want to click and donate. We're uh, raising money for Black Lives Matter as well as direct relief, uh, raising money for frontline healthcare workers battling COVID-19. For direct relief, we have $25 from Chastity Vicencio. Spicy drop, thanks for the stream, y'all. I love Apex and the voice work in the game in is fantastic. Uh, and for Black Lives Matter, we've got one from Megan Mullins, five dollars, and twenty-five dollars from Ali Muhammad. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um. Oh yeah, this is a good question uh, from Bishop Roger. How did the Game Awards um, Christmas event re reveal kind of come together, and what was it like to do that? Um. Probably one of the most surreal things I've ever had an opportunity to be a part of. And if you want to talk about, you know, when, when life just kind of flashes by, um, when they teased the concept of what they were thinking about doing, I just remember thinking to myself, but live, live fully rendered mocap of both facial movements and body movements and all that and interacting piped into another, you know, building and all that. I just thought, man, all the things in the sort of supply chain that could that could go wrong, that's such an ambitious thing to consider. And notes. then we did a test like a couple months beforehand and I went, okay, that's all right. It, it, it worked with some hiccups here and there, that kind of thing. Um, it was it was just incredible. I mean, I, like, I, I wish they could have shown even more behind the scenes of what, um, of what they pulled off just because it was so incredible to see such a large team of people kind of coming together for this literally two minutes and 15 seconds of, oh man, oh man, oh man, I hope this goes well. And uh, it was incredible. It was it was a neat thing to see. There were a lot of a lot of hardworking people that, that, you know, for days on end, put in a ton of effort for pulling that off. And the fact that we did pull it off and did it live and that, that a lot of folks did not realize that it was done live, that, that we were just across the quad um, from the theater and you know in just a tiny little room and and a, and a bank of computers with a bank of people working on it and all that it was just it was a, a neat thing but i was so petrified <laughs> <throughout the entire. laughs> that it just how it many just rehearsals went. did you have um you know we did two about two solid days of it so we did a lot of like day one was um i want to say two days no it was day it was the day before that we got on site ran through everything over and over and over and over again and then i think we had a tech rehearsal that day with the theater um, production team and then on the day of we did a bunch of run throughs and just kind of making sure that everybody we were we were kind of like like condensing everything with every hour that would pass it's like okay let's do one more run and now this is going to be like when we know we're 30 minutes out it's like because there's so many things with the with the technical aspect 
And at one point, somebody, of course, about, I think, maybe 45 minutes before this was supposed to happen, bumped one of the cameras, the little infrared cameras that, that creeped in the world. And it was like people could not believe that it had happened. And it was like, so they go out and they reset the whole world, all that. Like, it was all, like, all those little things. So then we were rehearsing to be like, okay, we're 30 minutes out. Everybody just stay where you are. And it was like, you know, let's, and then when we're 15 minutes out, Roger, you stand up and get ready, you know, like, and it's, so the whole time, like, your adrenaline is just going like haywire. And, uh, and when you just think about all the things that could go wrong, the audio feed from the theater, I might not have been able to hear Keely's microphone. I mean, it's like all the things that could have happened. I could have easily flubbed one of my lines. I could have forgotten something, all that stuff. And it didn't happen. And we pulled it off and it was a, it was a very neat Amazing. moment. Yeah, it was really cool. So, what do you well, think? did you were you memorized or were you reading? No, definitely memorized and 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 memorized and then had put little bullet points up on the front of what we call the camera. That's the other weird thing about mocap is that you know the camera is like somebody who's just holding something in front of you. There's no lens. There's no nothing. It's just everything that sort of understands how to render the the sort of reflective dots. Um, and turn it into this digital puppet of sorts. And so on the front of that, I had put bullet points of the things that we were supposed to try to get to. Um, and I never, of course, even bothered with it. I, it's like, literally, it's like the eyes roll up in the back of the head and you just sort of go into autopilot and, and try not to think about what it is that you're doing. Um, and just sort of just, you know, hope that it works. It, it, it was the closest thing I've had to, to going back to... Uh, to the days of like stand-up comedy when you knew you had like, you know, when you're starting out, you got seven minutes to go up and try to do the best job you can. And it, it felt like that. And uh, and I don't miss that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss that feeling, but it was such a neat thing. Again, like there were so many people that pulled it all off and it was such a neat thing for EA and Respawn and the mill to, to work on for that fan base. I mean, what a mm -hmm. neat thing to do for Apex Legends fans. I was just, I couldn't believe that, that that they had asked me to be a part of it and that, that I was entrusted with being able to pull it off. So it was a really just, I, I have such a nice, you know, warm fuzzy uh, over that whole thing because it was just such a cool thing to, to be a part of. I think someone's targeting me. Um, Zara Fuzzle says, yay, Justin, yay, Roger. Uh, hey, hi, Zara. But hi, Zara. I also have a great she's question. Our, she's our Apex Legends voice. She's the That's voice her. of AI announcer. Something, something countdown. Yeah, Mirage has a thing. <laughs> Mirage has a little thing for the, uh, he's he's always hey. like very intrigued by the, uh, by the voice. I forget what he calls her, but like, you know, like something, it's something like, you know, uh, the sexy, uh, the sexy announcer voice or something like that. He's, he's got a thing. Uh, now I was in the chat, uh, said, oh no, where is it? I've lost it. It was a great question. Roger, it was it was about. Have you ever rage punched a boulder? <laughs> no, like, but my character. Like my character yeah. yeah, no, I've I've rage quit a video game, <laughs> but I've never uh, I've never rage punched a boulder. Only Chris Redfield would do something as as crazy as that. What an icon moment, though. I know. Well, <laughs> leave it to Capcom on that kind of stuff. You're just like. What? I mean, it's, but of course, like, I don't know why, like, even, yeah, I have no weapon. I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> yeah, Daddy on PC is going, Roger, yeah. please get a shield. Please I know. Get a shield. I'm, yeah, I'm just, okay. This is, uh, yeah, this is not good. I think I'm wounded. Yes, and we're eliminated. There we go. Um, yeah, I just love the fact that it's like there's giant tarantulas in the game throughout yeah. and the whole time. And that's the one thing that people remember, like, but it was so fake when he starts punching a boulder at the end. And you're like, I don't know, guys, there's a lot, a lot of suspension of disbelief that's going on throughout that entire game. Oh, how did that, how did that one go? That game? Uh, could have gone better. No, I don't touch it. Like, this time. We can, we can bring it back. Started oh. out so well. <laughs> you get second place in the very first. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like I said, you guys thought that it's like, no, you, we'll carry you along. Like, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you are getting points though, right? Yeah. Uh, about seven at a time. So you know, <laughs> pretty good. 
I mean, you'll you'll get extra for being in a group. You'll get extra for just Lucy. surviving. Literally yeah. participation trophies. Thank you. Pretty much. <laughs> Look, I only I only say this because I'm not playing, and so you can't see how bad that I am. Good. Thank you. I am always the one who's just hiding behind a rock, and then there. just kind of waiting until everyone else gets killed, and then go in and get killed. Yep, that's what I do. I take a lot of pride in um, survival time, as. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Me too. It's like a, yeah. First one in and the last one out, but doing nothing in between those two moments. So it's great. It's, yeah, exactly. How has voice acting changed? Um, actually, no, there was a great, a very good question in the chat where someone's asking, what's the difference between acting in video games compared to doing TV animation movies? Um, a lot of times in animation um for uh cartoons um tv or, or film well not not so much for film but for tv uh, you'll do a group record it'll kind of be like a radio play um and it, it, it really depends on the show though because there there's been shows that i've done where you're recording with one other person or you're recording with um two other people or you're recording with like other people so it really depends um or sometimes you're just recording by yourself but a lot of times if you are recording by yourself you're having the voice director do the other lines so mm -hmm. it's it's more collaborative i feel like with more like acting with someone else for video games at least for legends and some other video games i've worked on it's all you you have to create that story in your head um you're totally on your own. Really like to be. Mm. Me. Am I? I'm not supposed to answer that, am I? You're you're <laughs> welcome to, to you, add in. No. <laughs> I can't. I'm trying to do two things at once, and that's <laughs> way. <more. laughs> I am. I have reached my limit. That's all right, uh, folks in the chat and who are watching from home. We are raising money for Black Lives Matter as well as Direct Relief. The links are on the screen and also in the description. Please donate. We're having a really fun time playing Apex Legends with Justine Huxley and Roger Craig Smith. We're here for another 45 minutes or so. Hopefully gonna get a win. <laughs> that's the, that's- Do it, you guys can do it. <laughs> Positive thoughts. I believe, I believe. Yes. Let's go. We might wanna have somebody take over for me if that's the case. I don't know, we're, we're gonna make it. No. Oh, there's a Pred on our trail, that's great. Oh, good. Be fine. Be fine. Fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Actually, going off the other question from earlier, if there was a, a cosplay for Mirage, would you wear it too? Me? Yeah. Yeah, but maybe only as a joke. I mean, I, I cannot... I, I have a hard enough time taking myself seriously just as a, a regular human being, let alone somebody who would, like, pull this off. And in that way, maybe it's just a lot like Mirage to be like, yeah, I, I can't do this. I can't pull this off. So I think that would be... That, that's just how it would be for me. <laughs> It wouldn't, I don't know. I, uh, and again, I mean, it's like, I mean, the hair, I can't do the hair. I mean, I just, yeah, the height, the, yeah, no. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm getting, I'm literally sweating thinking about that, so. <laughs> um, oh, what, I don't know how to pronounce this. I hope I don't butcher this too much. Uh, N I E K, Nick. Uh, Roger and Justine, have you met other Apex characters in real life, and do you meet them often doing voice acting? Okay. I was already friends with Allegra Clark before um, being in Apex. Um, we Enemy spotted. found out as, you know, not Contact from the very beginning. Awesome. We were taking classes together, um, taking workshops, casting director workshops. Um, we Neither of us had booked very much. Um, so I've known Allegra for years and years, um, and I was so excited when I booked it, um, going into the studio because I was asking the team with who other, which other voice actors are in the game, and they said Allegra, and then I ran into her at a callback for, um, voiceover gig, and we whispered to each other, I I'm in. Game of the game. This is so exciting. So that was very exciting for me. Um, obviously, she's 
Chris, but their friend, so sweet and so wonderful and hilarious. Um, and uh, yes, we do. We we have a group um, that just goes on and on. Sometimes I will out for a walk and I'll come back and there's 68 messages and I'm like, wow, this is a it's usually like Briscum who plays our Gibraltar. It's like him with his just pictures of Maui sunsets and hit and his glowing hair and Roger, you know, saying something ridiculous and hilarious and, uh, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. We've, we've done karaoke. Roger missed it, but the next time we, we get to do karaoke in person, Roger's got to join because that was pretty epic. Darren DePaul, who plays Revenant, was doing No with Allegra and it was, uh, it was Revenant version. Uh, you oh, know. perfect. Oh my God. Yeah, it was so uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, when you do karaoke, do you do it as Justine, as Roger, or do you do it as your characters? And what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh my gosh. Um, I love, I say a little, that's one of my favorites. Also, Natural Woman, Carol King, mm -hmm. anything Carol King, mm -hmm. I love. Um, I just do it as myself, just having fun. Um, everyone was just doing it as themselves uh, but Darren had to do a little because <laughs> why not cool. Roger what's your karaoke to, I'm trying to think like you know like I'm all out of love nice. I'm so lost without you Hell or, like, yeah. Raj, or, or would he be more like Abracadabra by uh, Steve Miller Band you know oh, what I mean yeah. Bamboozle Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. very good. We've yeah. got a few donations uh, I'm going to read out. Thank you, everyone, for donating. Links are on the screen and in the description if you'd like to donate to Black Lives Matter uh, or directly or both. So um, Zara donated $25 to both causes. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, Zara. Thank you so much, Zara. Um, we have Watchman, who watches the Watchman, uh, donated $20 to Direct Relief. Nawaz directed, uh, donated $20 to Direct Relief, and way to go. Annoyingly, Tiltify has cut off the half of your username. It just says way to go, Gam. But thank you, uh, donated $50 to Direct Relief. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, oh, that was a good question. Oh, so Andrew Stefansson says, love to see this as an aspiring voice actor. Question for both, what was the most fun project they've worked on, except for Apex Legends? Sure. Oh, no, 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 you, please. I... <laughs> you can't concentrate. Spicy drop, spicy drop. I just don't always want to be, I don't, I don't want to hog. Um, no, no, please. Hog um, away. I on a, a Disney Junior show called Goldie and Bear. Um, for many years where I played Little Red Riding Hood and the old woman who lives in a shoe and a bunch of other characters Hostel like place. dancing eggs that were friends with Humpty Dumpty. Um, and I just had the best time. That was the first animated show I ever booked. And um, it's what kept me in LA. I was, uh, in, no, it was about, I think about ready. years ago I booked it. Um, and I was, no, five years ago I booked it. I was thinking, moving back to New York and doing a theater in New York and when I booked it I was it, it we realized you know what that I'm gonna go to LA and, and stick with you know I, I still had an agent a voiceover agent in New York but I was really torn between theater and musical theater and doing it over full time um and so it kept me in LA and really opened up a lot of uh over opportunities for me. So I loved that so much. I also got to sing on the show. I love to sing. So, wonderful experience. Oh, it got very spicy there for a second, but <laughs> all good. Nice. Uh-oh. The problem is, is every time I watch Max play, I'm always constantly reminded of uh, that I will never reach these heights. I mean, <laughs> we're still having a hard there. time right now. <laughs> Wow, that was terrible. Because you have an anvil for a teammate. <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, no. 
Because it's, it's hard, like, I, I know that I can't do it. I can't play and talk at the same time. And so, let alone, like, playing a game like Apex, where you kind of have to be paying attention and listening out to people. Um, so yeah, I feel that. I do have a question uh, from the chat about playing Batman, but well, let's hold that until we are in between <laughs> rounds. This is going to be a very, like, long, long question. I'm going to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Batman. Uh, yeah, Batman, cool. Yeah, it was good. Come on! Come on! <laughs> What's, how do I jump again? Where, how do, you, I can't even, I'm spinning in circles. Are you guys? We're here. Oh, there's my Wait. Batman answer. <laughs> how do I get my cape out again? Need to recharge my shield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This, Recharging my shield. Just, I, I feel like I'm doing more harm to respawn than I am any good by, by, <laughs> by participating in these moments. But again... It's a lot of fun though. I think yeah. that's, that's what makes the game, uh, some of the rounds fun, is just the ones where everything goes wrong. Yeah! Hey, okay. That's good. Lucy, were you, were you ever a cheerleader in life, or...? We never. I don't. <laughs> I'm an emotional cheerleader. There you go. Uh, we never had them in the UK, really. I've never heard of anyone being a cheerleader in the UK. You're not missing out on much. Let's be no. honest. No. I did watch some of that Netflix show about them, and it just looked terrifying and a lot of work. And I was like, Is that a documentary? Like, wasn't there a documentary on like cheer camp or something like that that was just intense? Yeah. 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 And it was. It was very. I don't know. I think people don't realize how much work it is. Cause yeah. it's, all, it's all gymnastics and stuff too. And there yeah. were just, you know, awful videos of people being dropped and you know. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how I've lived this long. This is, um... What do you think is the best uh, of Apex? Of, of the voice cast, Roger. Do you think it's Chris or do you think it's Johnny? What do you think is the best player of Apex of the voice cast? Do you think Chris or Johnny? Both really good, it seems like. Honest, yeah, I, mean, I don't know enough. I would imagine, I mean, Johnny seems like he's squatting up a lot. Um, and although, but Johnny voices crypto and I'm not supposed to be supportive. <laughs> <You're> not supposed <laughs> to. So I would go with, eh, but then Chris is the talking robot. So it's like the smart <laughs> robot. That's a tough one for, uh, for me, you know, cause I'm always in character. I'm very method <laughs> as an actor. He's, he's blocked. Crypto's blocked in the, uh, in the Apex Legends group chat on your yeah, phone. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And the smiling robot, thankfully, doesn't have much to say anyway. So let's just we'll keep it at that. No, I, I honestly don't know. I, I um, that'd be interesting. I, and Dave, have they squatted up or wait? No, because Johnny's PC, isn't he? I think they're on different uh, platforms. Yeah, I think. In fact, they might even be considering that. I think Johnny was considering getting onto Xbox or something like that and doing that. Because when I when I played with Chris, they just we, everybody just laughs at us because it's like <laughs> this is the longest I've ever survived in any one of my games. I think, and actually, probably combined the totality of all of my games combined probably doesn't come close to how long I've lived in this one match. Wait, Roger, have you had a win before? No. <gasps> really? I don't think Today I've had a win. Today could be your day. I doubt that seriously, because... Oh man, the pressure's <laughs> really mounting now. Because <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, no, I don't think... Um, no, I don't think... I can't remember if I got one win or not. Uh, I could probably look on my profile, right? Yeah, your, um, your achievements will have one. Okay. Maybe on our next little, uh, once I die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not right now. Uh, yeah, sure uh, I'll look into that. Drew McGee says, someone told Roger, Chris is getting a PC to play with people on PC, and Johnny is about to borrow an Xbox One. Oh, cool. That's perfect. There you go. That'll be interesting, Justine. That'd be fun to... Uh, yeah, I and then what, we should, what we also need to do is like have all of us that are just just awful all squat up and go against them and just watch <laughs> them troll us. Like, you know, Ow! Who keeps shooting at my foot? Ow! Who keeps shooting at my foot? <laughs> I can just see that going on and on. Allegra's pretty good, too. Allegra? 
she's pretty good. Yeah, too. she can game. Yep, she knows what she's know, doing. Does anybody else play? I don't think any uh, actors play. I think out of. <laughs> oh, Branscom definitely does it. Yeah. How's yeah, no, I, I I would imagine between those three, it's got to be, and and they're all very capable. That's what's uh, that's what's funny about me even being asked to come on here and do this. <laughs> so, thank you. And Mac, I'm so sorry because when you said we were playing ranked, I just remember thinking, well, that can't spell anything good for you. Oh no, we're we'll be we'll be doing better in here because of SBMM. It's fine. This this is all planned. Oh, hashtag fix SBMM. I mean, that's what we're supposed to say, right? That's what oh, we're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the... Okay. As gamers, we... Oh my yeah. god. What do, you, what do you think of that? That? Oh my... The internet, social media, <laughs> artisticism. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just uh, nothing... Fix SBMM. I, I posted on Twitter um, for April Fools that I uh, had become the newest... Um, Apex Legends dev, and, um, and I was gonna be this this uh, senior um, senior uh, this way. Uh, level designer, and people bought it like crazy. I I got so many remove SBMM. You know, you need to fix this. You need to. Edit. It was like as a hashtag. Uh, oh, fools! Sense. Like Attention. no way. I mean, if you ever, you know ever met me or if you give me a lot of twitter people haven't but if you if you know anything about me you know i'm not a gamer and i am the worst at this game and so it was just so funny and then it was funny because some of the devs who i'm friends with like private messaged me and they were like oh, welcome to the team we're so excited <laughs> i was like oh no, no. coach me <laughs> the last time i played like how could you possibly think <laughs> Oh no! Squad. Yep. No. Is that what's going on? This is the last squad. Last squad. <laughs> oh. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm dead. You're doing great. Nope. Ooh. Oh, there. Now I'm dead. Hashtag awaiting recovery. Oh, squad. this might be it. Oh. 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 Crap. Oh. 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 Dang oh. oh. it. Broke him though. Right here, right here. Yeah. There you go, Roger. Hey! <laughs> I'm so good at this game! Crushed it! Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Achievement unlocked. You are the oh, you got the achievement? Yeah, that was your first oh, yeah. win then. Hell yeah. Roger, do you want to keep playing or do you want to like try and get someone random in or and you just want to chat? Kill. Let's get someone random in and let these guys win a game. <laughs> <laughs> I dealt five damage. Hell yeah. Win, and got a kill somehow. It's contributing. How oh, does, yeah. yeah. That kill that, help? Uh, <laughs> excuse me, so what do I, because I'm, I'm so excited I'm choking up my own spit. Um, <laughs> how, do, how do I, so I return to the lobby and then you want me to leave the party? And you guys uh... will invite me. Who actually knows how to play video games. Well, it'll, it'll just match make them, right? If you guys want to keep playing and we can chat and you're not going to be in the zone. I'll do, yeah. yes, I'll be able to answer questions and Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. So let me um uh let me not ready. Or you want me to just leave the uh leave the party? Yeah, that works and then we could just uh go two of us. That that would be okay. Cool. We're uh people in the chat are saying five damage is still damage. Thank you, thank you. You're all way too kind. <laughs> it's like, uh, what is it? There's an old joke. Uh, the optimist, the optimist fell off the uh, the top store, or the the top the fell off the roof of a hundred story building, and at each window bar on the way down, kept calling out to people below. Okay, so far. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, see this bells well. I'm like, how do I leave a party again? Uh, start and leave. Yeah, let's just go. Uh, da, 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 there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I want to leave that party. 
If they had a vote, they'd be saying, yes, he wants to leave the party. So are we sticking with these accounts or moving to our other one? Oh. I guess we could go to the main one now. Oh, there you go. Right. There it is. There it is. Yeah, there it is. That's the insult to the injury. Thank you, gentlemen. No, well, no, it's like physically impossible to, to play with you on ranked without Twitch yeah. accounts. So. All I heard was it's physically impossible to play with you. That's... Uh, oh. That's just like that's, that's not what I said. That's me deep. <laughs> I get it. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so while they're getting set up, Roger, there was a question earlier. What was it like playing Bat? I, well, you still play Batman in a number of things. What was it like uh, wearing the cowl, following in the footsteps of Kevin Conroy? So I've never worn the cowl. <laughs> would, you, anything, would you cosplay as Batman? Would you wear no, the cowl? Yeah, it, just, it just ruins the character for everybody. Uh, you know, and again, if I, it's like, for one, I'd be way too hot at Comic-Con trying to do that. And then I'd probably have too many people like picking me up as Batman or, you know, patting me on the head as Batman. <laughs> so we don't want that. Um, no, I mean, really and truly, it was like, um, I mean, just an incredible honor uh and and again so surreal um to be a part of something like that and both troy and i were saying this at the time that it was like you know the elation that you get over like landing a gig like that is is one thing but um but there's a lot to be said for then the moment comes that you're like oh no <laughs> i mean we don't because so much of what we do is like you know like I said, it is kind of like birthing a vocal baby and handing it over to somebody and kind of going, I've done the best I can do. I, I, I rely very heavily on my directors in terms of like um, working collaboratively to get the performance that they're asking for. And yet you're still kind of unaware of like, what's the final version of this gonna look like? And, and there's a lot of things that happen sometimes in post-production where they will cut a segment of a line out the audio could be too low, it could be too loud, it could be all these different things. We might have gotten bad intel in terms of what we were supposed to achieve or record for that particular scene, which I've had happen a lot of times in video games where it's like, you're flying blind so often that we were just sort of, oh, <laughs> kinda, just kind of, you're nervous about what may or may not happen. Um, and yet, at the same time, you're just so, honored to have a chance to be a part of something like that that it was just like wow this is uh this is really cool and i, I was glad that the, the game and the performance was received well that people understood that we weren't trying to act as if we were a replacement for anybody and when people say like filling those shoes i always just say you can't fill those shoes it's not that's not what it's about it's about doing something that that, that would honor the idea that this is an origin story and that the performance would wind up being what, what Kevin and Mark had established in those roles. Uh, and thankfully people enjoyed that and that the gameplay, I mean, it's nice to see people still kind of going back to it going, you know, this is a good game. This is a really hard game with a lot of good boss, boss battle and good storyline. Uh, yes, it was insane. It was a, a neat treat for sure. Yeah, so listen, to, listen to how much more, like, like all now, now there's stuff yeah. happening. Now they're both going, oh, dude, oh. oh. Life. oh <laughs> yeah. what, what, what we're not hearing, what we're not hearing is, hey, you're doing good so far, buddy. <laughs> nice job. Oh, well, look at you. Look what you did. You know, that's that's how the game's supposed to be played. I mean, I'm still, I'm terrible. I just, I put, I put you on to, to save my own face, so it's fine. So then... <laughs> Justine and Lucy and I, we need to squat up and take these guys on. Oh my god! I've got it downloaded. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but no, I mean, thinking back on your careers, what have been, you know, the, the, the kind of breakout roles for you that you've really enjoyed doing? What are the ones that people come up to you at places like Comic-Con and talk to you about? Let's go this. I need it. Uh, well, this is the biggest video game ever been in with the biggest role of a uh, of a game um, because I've been I've been in some bigger games but I've always had um, smaller characters or I've done like multiple shield, supporting yeah. characters so this is the biggest uh, role for me for a video game which is really exciting um, I'm much newer at voiceover than Roger so um, but I've done like before this I've done a lot of promos and a lot of commercials um, and then biggest my biggest uh, animated show was Goldie and Bear um, as Little Red Riding Hood, which was so exciting. Yeah. Which is cool too, because I mean, I, anything you get to be a part of, like with for little kids, that's the stuff that to me, 
Okay. Is always like that. Just has the longest. Those have legs. Those those gigs last for a long time. And there's a new audience kind of coming online all the time. Um, and so it's a, it's a neat thing. Like when you get to be a part of like a little little kids series like that. So I I mean along the same lines. I think a lot of a lot of people their introduction very often when they're younger is is to gaming and that kind of thing would be something along the lines of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I get a lot of the Sonic fan base. Um, that reaches out and then like without a doubt between Ezio and Mirage I mean those characters um, you know it's it's a neat thing Sonic's a little bit of a different fan base because there's been other actors who have portrayed it so people have their favorites but with something like Ezio or Mirage um, it's always nice when you don't have to worry about somebody going well you're not my Mirage <laughs> you're, not, you're not my Ezio and it's like I'm the only one so it, it's a uh, but it's such a neat thing to be a part of anything like that. So, you know, I'm also much older. So, yes, that's uh, not that much older. <laughs> I'm ancient. Uh, when you're when you're taking on a role, is that what's kind of like, can you do you recognize in advance? It's like, oh, people are going to love this character. People are going to latch onto this. I don't feel like I have any idea because this can go in so many different directions. Um, I feel like, especially for Apex Legends, they said they were doing no publicity whatsoever before it came out. And so I was kind of thinking, that's interesting and strange. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, hopefully it'll do well, but maybe it won't. Um, and that's okay. I'm just really happy to have the job. I'm happy to be working, happy to be acting, doing, doing what I love to do um, for a living. And I don't really think that much about it. So when something does hit, like Apex Legends, it's surprise to me and it's such a pleasant surprise yeah I, I had the exact same experience i remember being um on a break uh with chantel and drew and like the the crew from the mill like we were all sitting around while we were literally recording the mocap for the the launch trailer and i remember drew at the time saying like you know yeah this is coming out in uh i was saying like so when are you guys you know thinking about doing this and i was thinking i was gonna hear like a year out and he says oh january and, and i was like <laughs> In my mind, I'm going, oh man, okay. Cause this, like, this was like October or November, no joke. And I was like, I don't see how. And then when he said the same thing, it was like, yeah, we're going to do it all. Where literally it's just going to be maybe at midnight the night before we'll launch something or tease it, but it's going to come out free to play, launch trailer, boom, the whole thing's. And I remember thinking, wow, that's crazy in this day and age where, it, you know, how do you find an audience anywhere? I just remember thinking, wow, that's, that's an ambitious approach to this. And I had forgotten all about it. And then on February 2nd, I think it was, or 4th, um, I remember that it was the day after the Super Bowl um, that it. Uh, I started getting a text message from one of my buddies who's a big gamer out in Texas. And he's like, are you in this new game? And I was like, I, I don't know what, you know, what are you Which talking one? about? <laughs> yeah, like, Apex Legends. And it's funny because we very often work on video games under a code name. So we don't even know what we're working on. Sometimes you don't even know what the final version is going to be called. And so all of a sudden I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I am in that. Is that out? And then, and then I just started watching. I started following on social media. I started watching what had happened that week, and it, it it can go that way so many times. I mean, it's been sad to think that there's been like animated series that I've been a part of that just kind of come out. They don't catch an audience, and they go away. And they're phenomenally written shows that are phenomenally well produced. And it's like it just kind of goes that way. So you never. There's an old adage I think in all of entertainment that that the only thing anybody knows is that nobody knows nothing. And it's like, you just never know when something's gonna be a map. I mean, who would have thought that like something like Napoleon Dynamite would have been yeah. what it was, you know, when it would have been just a direct to video little thing. It's like, it just blows up to become like a cult classic. And it's like, that's that's this industry. So you never ever know. It's it's kind of a, it's the excitement and you can't, you don't, you don't go in thinking I'm gonna be a part of the biggest thing ever. It's like, now you're not, now you're not performing. Now you're, now you're thinking about the end result as opposed to going, I just, what do I want? What do I want to do for my director right now? What do I, what do I want to do for the client? Mm. Are you doing more performance capture these days? Or are you kind of just strictly sticking to voice? For, for me personally, um, Apex was my very first full performance capture gig. Mm. Um, I'd done a bunch of like facial motion capture with the helmet prior to that. But this was the first, you know, putting on the ping pong suit um, and uh, and and dancing around. Um, and we'll, I mean, we'll see. It's like, it, you know, it seems like the technology is catching up. I have 
suffered in the past when the technology couldn't catch up to take a five foot five actor and stretch them. <laughs> and so I can remember, I remember the first time that I went in for a role and as I was in the waiting room, and this is many years ago, I went into the waiting room and I was showing up as a voice actor. They were looking for voice actors, but it was, it was also going to be a mocap thing. And on the sign in sheet, it said, we're looking for actors who are 5'11 and taller. And, and I, I, I remember like calling my agent and I was going, for the first time in my life, I'm too short for a voiceover role. Wow. <laughs> like, I, don't, I think things are changing. So I, I don't, I don't tend to, I, I tend to be strictly voiced for the most part of what I'm working on. Justine, what about you? I, I've only ever done facial capture. So I've never done performance capture, but that's something that is looked really cool and I'd love to try it if I get the opportunity. Uh, Prabhat in the chat says, I just want to thank Roger for being such a huge part of my childhood with characters like Ezio, Chris, Sonic, and Batman. Um, and that kind of relates to a question uh, Timur put in earlier, which was who are your acting heroes, uh, whether you know that's voiceover or just acting in general? Do you see, Justine, how old I am? With like, I've reached that point where people are like, Thanks I just wonder if you're going to pick up on that. Hey, what? Where, where, are, where are all of you in my bedroom right now? <laughs> how do I turn on the Wi-Fi? <laughs> Why are you all laughing? Justine, you go. That's, but think, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of somebody's childhood, but holy cow, does that make me feel old. They so. might still be young. They might still be young. They might yeah. just be on the cusp of teen. Great. It's all in there. I can't fight it. Um, well, I started out doing musical theater ever since I was a um, And I went to college for theater in New York. Um, and my, my biggest and uh, intentions are the people like Bernadette Peters, Mandy Patinkin, um, the the theater greats. Um, and actors, gosh, I mean, Streep, Laura Linney, um, just strong female actresses, love those. And oh, for voice actors, um, my, my cousin, I know this is really corny, but my cousin, Tasia Valenza, <laughs> who's a voice actress, um, she's amazing, and we actually met each other through voiceover. We are cousins Amazing. by marriage. Yeah, we we didn't we ha we didn't know each other ten years ago. Um, we're cousins by marriage, and uh, we we happened to be at the same voiceover uh, agency and met each other uh, at a party. And I said, I think we might be related. And she's amazing. She's. Poison Ivy and um, done some Star Wars stuff and she's a commercial promo voiceover actress. So she's a big inspiration to me and I just love her so much. Roger, how about you? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, as far as voiceover heroes, it's like, I, there, I, it, I'm not trying to sound like disingenuous when I say like, I'm in awe of like the people that I get to meet and work with all the time. And it's like, I, and I, I, what a really cool, cool thing that's happened in my life to where I've gotten to like work with, you know, my voice acting heroes. My, my Taft Hartley job into the union had Charlie Adler as my director, Tara Strong and Maurice LaMarche all in one room. And I was oh my God. death and kept making yeah. mistakes. It just, but it was like, you know, and I remember Maurice um, and I've told him that so many times and I still can't get over it. Like my brother and I had a VHS tape of a Rodney Dangerfield comedy special, a young comedian special. And Maurice was a young com comedian that was on there doing impressions. And it was like, we burned a hole in this VHS tape. Like we watched it so many times. And I was, I remember like telling Maurice, I'm like, I know your act. I mean, I've watched the, you know, you doing all your impressions. You have, meet Maurice Lamage. And I'm like, I know your act. And to, th to then be here in the room with you when I just was barking up a tree of voiceover as a potential career and now here I am is like, it's such a surreal moment. And then to have done so many things with him throughout the years has just been like, it's incredible. And I, and I, I mean it when I, when I say I, I, I get to work with some of the most creative, fun, zany, crazy, awesome, you know, uh, just incredible human beings. So I, I don't know, I, as far as like my heroes, I get to, I get to say they're my colleagues. It's a neat thing. I'm always in awe of what people can do. Uh, Justine, question from the chat, not normal but magical asks, do you have a favorite Broadway musical? And if so, which is your favorite song from it? 
my gosh, of course. Um, Sunday in the Park with George is my favorite Broadway musical of all time. Um, and my favorite song is Move On. Stephen Sondheim is my favorite musical theater composer. He's so brilliant. Um, and Roger, a lot of questions about your bird pictures. <laughs> Which I really, I really enjoy. You, so I didn't realize you were so into taking pictures of nature. Um, one question from the chat from Michael Nevis is, can you throw some bird lines into Mirage Law? Do you think you could, you could get in with Respawn and say, we might have to, yeah, we might have to, we might have to work on something like that. I'm trying to think um, what we could do, what we could do, but um, yeah, that's neat. And the bird thing literally is like, you want to talk about one of the odd things that, I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to think of like, you know, positive aspects of the lockdowns and the entire pandemic scenario. But the idea that it was like having to sit down and get small and just kind of look around, I was suddenly finding myself kind of looking out a window and just spending more time. I used, I used to love taking photographs of, of like the hummingbirds, but that was more like a challenge and just trying to like practice photography and work on different techniques and things like that. But in just wanting to dive back into that as a way of sort of passing time, I then started really kind of becoming intrigued by all the different birds that were visiting this little fountain and uh, and found myself kind of going, oh, uh oh, I'm becoming like a, a bit of a birder. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then I just thought, well, what better thing to do right now than when we're all sort of stuck? And it's like, I'll just share, you know, since I, I try to be aware of the fact that it's like people are going to follow me not because of that. They're going to follow me because of maybe a character I've voiced or something that I'm a part of that they want to, you know, have a little insight into. Um, but I also look at it like, but I, I rather than just self promote all the time, uh, here's something I'm passionate about and something I'm learning. And if you like it, so be it. If you don't, that's fine. Mute me <laughs> it's like, if you don't like the bird pictures, but it's been interesting to kind of share that with folks. And I'm glad that people are, uh, I'm glad that people are, are enjoying it. And I've learned so much and have learned so many different groups uh, that exist. It's it's just a neat thing to be a part of now. So I'm, I'm like super excited to kind of get back out and actually start maybe meeting up with some birding groups and uh, and, and, and nerding out, nerding and birding even harder uh, once we can get back out there. That should be, you should Safe. have a YouTube channel, nerding and birding. Nerding and birding. Combine the two. Bird, birding Safe nerding. <laughs> When it's safe what to travel that? again, do you think when it's safe to travel again, do you think that you will go on birding expeditions? I know I know people that like go all over the world to see birds. Do you are you that? Yeah, I could I could see myself I could see myself trying to combine so the nightscape photography and the astrophotography is still like a, a big passion for me, but that all takes place after dark and and very often i enjoy hiking and mountain biking and doing that kind of stuff so there's a part of me that's like well if, if you're looking to to kind of like you know scratch the photography itch during the day what better thing than to actually try to combine and go all right well if i'm gonna go pick a dark sky site you know in another state somewhere then why not also pull out the audubon society app or merlin bird id and start seeing like well what what species would be available out there and is there a is there an uncommon one that I might want to go find and, you know, be on the hunt for and that kind of thing. So yeah, I could easily see myself going, Ooh, I need to go get this, you know, I need to go get a photo of this bird, <laughs> which, uh, but it's, it's been a neat thing. It, it, it has been a very, it's been a really neat thing to kind of, uh, like give me perspective on, on, on a lot of things in terms of just watching the way that their little world exists. And then you start seeing the connectivity of everything. You start seeing what they're doing, how the other plants are responding, how the other animals are responding. It's been a really neat thing to, uh, to kind of have the world get very small like that. So uh, I, chat, I, chat is just posting hashtag nerding and birding now. So I think you have to make it a thing. Nerding and birding. <laughs> I love it. Birding and nerding, nerding and birding. I love it. Um, what are you doing? So, and, uh, as well as taking as your photography, what are you doing during lockdown? Are you playing games? Are you reading or watching anything? <laughs> Keep yourself clearly, occupied. Clearly not playing Apex Legends enough. <laughs> <laughs> Justine, what are you doing? Oh, what am I doing? Um, I am so much million new recipes. Um, I. Have 
lot of paella. My mom and I'm quarantining with my mom, so we've been we've been cooking up a ton, um, getting farmers market boxes every week and vegetables in whole new ways and i got this really amazing new cookbook uh, from one of my favorite chefs in new orleans that does kind of a new orleans take on mediterranean food so i've been making delicious food from from his cookbook um i've been uh playing a lot of categories on zoom and uh and with friends um my boyfriend and my mom and i will play categories to the mcdonald you have to play Michael McDonald as loud as you possibly can um, and, <laughs> and try to distract the and uh, and that's been that. but also I, I do a weekly Zoom um, with uh, some of my college friends that were we were all in um, theater school together and uh, we're all over the US um, some are in Oregon California uh, Connecticut, New York, and we are planning this whole thing is over and we can travel and be again. We're planning a big, uh, get together and gonna rent a big house in Oregon and, and just have a crazy, crazy weekend. I'm very excited about it. Good okay. plan. Yeah. 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 Okeying with them. Yeah. Uh, Carriage Wen says, Roger, if you made videos of your birds, would you do some comic dubbing over them? I've already done that. In fact, I it, it might even be on YouTube yeah, still. So I think funny. I, it's so good. Yeah, I just again I was bored. It was like, it's funny. I do these little things and people go like, yeah, give give us more. And I'm like, it took me a week and a half to do that. I can't, <laughs> it's like I can't. I'm happy to do it and have it exist. But no, of course, I I might get inspired one other time. Like, it's really funny. These little goldfinches, these little birds, they just go bonkers with bathing it's very funny to watch how the different birds respond to the ways in which they kind of clean off and the little goldfinches they just get drenched and i thought it was funny so i set up the camera outside by the little fountain and i did it in slow mo and it just became this little scene between one guy that was just going bonkers and flipping through the water and he was there for who knows how long and another bird came over as this bird was sitting there bathing and the, the bird just kept looking at this one bird like what is wrong with you and then flew away and i thought well there's a scene and so yes there is i have a youtube account i um r rarely post on there i've been trying to find a way to stream um like images of the moon connecting a dslr camera to the telescope to live stream images of the moon and that kind of thing but it's i'm learning obs and all these other live streaming things and i'm you know clearly as you can see how good i am at uh <laughs> at Apex Legends, the uh, the whole uh, streaming broadcast platform is a, is another uh, is another language to itself for me. So I, hopefully we'll do that someday. But um, if you go to Roger Craig Smith, I think is the YouTube channel, you might see that uh, that little bird video uh, on there. So yes, it exists. Okay. If you need tech help, we've got Eric. We've got the voice of God who's been helping us get set up for today. Okay, he can sort you up. Okay, thank you. Eric. <laughs> It's so freaky, man. Are you in my room? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just seeing people in the chat are calling for you to do a cooking stream. Oh, that would be fun. I've done some some uh, some stories, of my cooking. So, um, that out, but maybe it'd be really fun. Maybe cooking in character, cooking some French <gasps> food. That'd be really fun. Ooh, cooking in character Ooh. would be great. That's a series <laughs> right there. But you can't cook with gas. And I mean, it's, it's uh, everything's got to be like an electrical range, or literally, you just yeah. have to like put, put like <laughs> just, yeah, exactly. Just to, just take the plug and just jam it into like whatever you're cooking, and just electrocute it to to fry it. That's the only thing you can do. Cannon. Uh, Prabhat, who was the uh, person who said that? Thank you for being in there in, the ch in during their childhood, Roger. They said they're only 21. It didn't mean to make you feel old, but they ask, oh, is there anyone? Is there any one particular performance in a game that stands out to you in recent years? Hmm. I think that's uh, just a general question. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, for, uh, obviously for both of us, just like, like um, for the ones that we've played or just like in general, like uh, all of gaming? I think, I think just a general performance. They don't, they don't say your performance. Oh, okay. Justine, what about you? Any games that like any any anything that caught your ear or eye? Mm. 
seen so many, but um, I worked on uh, I worked on Spyro, um, the new version, and Kenny is just so good. I just love Tom Kenny so much. He's so hilarious. I've worked with him before on a couple other projects, and I'm just so in awe of all the characters he can do. I mean, besides the fact that he's SpongeBob, he just is has the biggest range. It's insane. So I I love Tom Kenny. He's yes. Wonderful and a very sweet person. Oh no, guys, where did you rank there? Uh, seventh. Seventh. That wasn't too bad. I was gonna say it's coming up to two o'clock, so that might have to be the last one. That's totally um, okay. But what a great stream! We got Roger his first win. Yay! <laughs> uh, we raised a bunch of money for charity for Black Lives Matter and for direct relief. The do the donation links are still gonna be open. We're running this thing for like four more weeks, five more weeks. Um, donation links will be open that whole time. Thank you to everyone who's donated and spread, you know, retweeted the stream and asked questions. It's been really nice to have a stream where we're just like in the chat as much as we are. And thank you so much to Roger and Justine for answering all those questions and playing with us. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thanks for everybody who, who donated and who watched me ruin your impression of Apex Legends. <laughs> got that win though. Uh, I got a win. Got the win. Yes. That's all that matters. Uh, I thank did you to Max and Jordan. 100 damage. It was and you got the kill though. You got the kill. Yeah. 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 I dealt 100 damage in one game and didn't get a kill. Dealt 5 damage and got a kill. I will never understand this game. <laughs> Five damage is still damage, like the chat said. Jordan uh, Max, thank you guys. Thank you. That was super thank fun. Thank you, everyone. Uh, don't forget to join us here tomorrow. Future of gaming, everyone. PS5. Uh, who knows what we're going to be seeing, but we'll be having a pre and post show. We'll be dissecting all the big announcements, hopefully, getting a first look at some next gen games. And maybe you two are in some of them. You just can't tell us. <laughs> That would be the ultimate <laughs> betrayal. Um, but join us here tomorrow, 12.30 uh, Pacific time. Thank you for watching. See you.